Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. I'm Patrick Cristiano, your host, the publisher of TheaterLife.com, a website for theater buffs covering all things theater. And I have a really special guest today, my friend, Eric Dever, the artist, and you have a new exhibition right now at the Barry Campbell Gallery in Manhattan. Tell us about it. Well, thank you, Patrick, and and especially for having me on and to talk about the show. Oh, thank you so much for coming. It's I love your work. Oh, <laughs> it's it's well, it's nice to be able to share it with with your audience too, and and uh, I couldn't I couldn't be more pleased with with the exhibition, and and of course I work quietly in my own space for a number of years to accumulate um, this work over time, and so. When, when it's up on the walls in the gallery, it's a, it's a, a very exciting thing for me. I just let me. I want it, to. It's at the Barry Campbell Gallery, which is at. They're at the old gallery because they have a new gallery too. Yes. But the, you're at 530 West 24th Street in the gallery district there, just between 10th and 11th. That's correct. And they have a new gallery too on 524 West 26. So you're going to be the last exhibition in the old gallery, and you've been with them for. How long now? This is my third exhibit, and they I was one of the first artists they signed in 2013, and so we're, we're at nine years so far, um, and I couldn't, couldn't be happier. And it's nice to close out the space this way, too, and one of the added benefits is I, um, um, of course, the, the gallery and Christine and Martha, they install the whole, the whole exhibit, but uh, um, I do have the entire space, which is sort of makes it a bit like a, in my mind, a museum show. <laughs> and and now, the, now the show, the show is going to be up until October fifteenth. Yes. So there's plenty. I'm going tomorrow. I can't Thank wait. I, I'm so ex excited to see it because I love your work. But yeah. we have some, we have some installation photos. Just a few. Let, let's show the our uh, audience the installation photos. This is so. That 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 piece on the left. That's how how big. Um, that is a six feet by 12 feet. So it's 12 feet long by six feet high. It, it's just, this, it looks fabulous. Thank you. The title, the title is Lily of the Nile and it's, um, it's, uh, the, based on an, also an agapanthus. And the other one? The other one is, is titled, um, Amaryllis and Alteo. It's, it's a amaryllis flower that blossoms for the first time in four years, um, despite my, my care. And it seemed to me, it seemed to me the reason, one of the reasons that uh, clinched the title to look at things in bloom with this thing blooming for, for uh, the first time in four years, I, I thought it's, it's a sign. <laughs> so, um, we have more installation, a couple more installation photos I want to show you, show. I love that they look, they look fabulous. All this stuff together looks fabulous. Thank you. I mean, there's one more installation photo I want because we're going to break down the, the the artwork. And those the birds of paradise is that what? Yes, this is this, this is one of the benefits of having um, an additional room in the gallery is that Christine Christine Berry organized some of the California inspired works in this room, and so we we see the uh, the bird of paradise plant, which for me is reminiscent of flying fish and birds and. And, uh, and then, then also a glimpse of a, a sea arch um, in the central coast around near Monterey. Now, your, all, of you, all of your work is, a, is an exploration of nature. Yes, uh, and yeah. you, you come from California, but you did your, your final degree work here in New York. Where did you? I went to New York University, and it's the, called the Steinhardt School. And uh, um, I was there. I graduated in in 1988. <laughs> Getting to be an old man, are you? Yes, I, it's I, true. I'm joking. I'm joking. It's You're true. A young guy. Yeah. <laughs> You're a well, but young I think guy. for I think for people in creative professions, though, it's we, we hit our stride um, later in life. Which is nice because you're accumulating in a different kind of way. Exactly. Pulling things. But we have more pictures now. Now we have some pictures from the exhibition. Now, uh, let's have the first one. Now this is you in front of that large painting. It just really shows you how big this is. This this the size of this painting. It's like 
the scale. It's amazing. Hey, thanks, Patrick. I don't really like to pose in front of my pictures, but it became, I thought it was necessary to establish the sense of scale. Um, but when these are posted on social media, mm -hmm. they often look like um, very nice postage stamps. <laughs> but the truth <laughs> is they're large paintings and very gestural. Okay, but we have another one from the, from the exhibition. Now, this is, a but is this a whole painting or the detail of that? Um, it's, it's another whole painting. I titled this one Agapanthus, just to distinguish, but it's the same, it's based on the same plant. And I had worked on a couple of versions of, of this, uh, trying to enter into how to, to explore this. And, and, and so this is just another iteration of the same painting, or same subject, rather. But not, not all of your all, all of your work is is an exploration of nature. Yes. I mean, yeah. and and it, it's it's a perspective that you've gotten from California and and now here on Long Island. So you're getting to how, what's the difference? How does it, how does it? Um, you, I I was trying. I was thinking of them in terms of um, of latitude, really, and so so California is a more subtropical um, parallel and so around the world and so certain plants grow in this in this zone and the the degree of sunlight the brightness is different and and but then in the north where or or, or northern latitudes um, some of the things it's it's a maybe deeper shadows here but one of the phenomena that that I enjoy um, somehow trying to pull it into my work is this idea of the gloaming or the or mm. l'air bleu, and and so often I I cite many of my my paintings in this summer period between the um, the um, it, between June and, and this time this year, and uh, when when the twilights last seem to last for an hour or so, and wow. that's the big chief difference for me. <laughs> and now, now your exhibition also came with a catalog. A, 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 yes. A, 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 which is which is which I hear is really beautiful too. We can, Thank you. Yeah. Now let, let's look at some more of the images from the exhibition. Um, this is um, Amaryllis and Alteo again. I've titled it after really the Greek myth about the woman, the goddess uh, um, Amaryllis, who presents herself to Alteo, and he's not particularly interested. He's interested in flowers, really, uh -huh. and so she presents himself and pierces her heart with a golden rod, according to the advice of the Delphic Oracle. And on the last day of this exercise, he opens the door and he finds this plant that's, and the plant to me, it just seems very cardiac in a certain respect. And I, I, I didn't avoid that while painting it. And of course, the meaning shifted here. Um, but I, I stayed. I stayed with that. Now all your all your stuff is really layered too. It's it's like how many layers like is in one piece. Um, well, and this is a good example. You could one can see through to that that palish um, form flower in the in the um, sort of in the background, and that's sort of a first pass. And then and then the other the the other brush strokes that went into the top red form constitute another and as well as some of the green and and then i went back in and i painted out the background which was which was a similar green into that blue hue and so that would constitute another layer so this is about six six layers of this of this and it's somewhat similar to maybe how someone might work in and even, and even, when, even even like a, the large painting that's like six by 12 is do you that's do more that's that's a more layers yeah that's a lot of back and forth that 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 took a, quite a while to to achieve you can take the painting now you don't have to leave it up that long uh i don't know if you still have it on or not <laughs> uh but so, so you so that does take much longer and it takes you have more layers when you do something that is that big you know it's it's for for me it's a kind of searching i'm i'm ultimately doing this for myself mm -hmm. and it's something I would like to see or know about. It's just that I don't know what it is when I start. And so it's something that reveals itself. No, nobody ever knows what their life is until they exactly. say the same thing, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I believe in that. And, that, and I think that's, what, that's part of the, 
the the hook as far as the you know the interest in continuing to work on something for for a number of months it's that uh, it takes stubbornness as well but it is that 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 curiosity really of what I'd like what would you like to see um, and so I, I give that to myself so, so we have some more images from the show up close well <laughs> a rose this is an interesting one here, and the, the um, Gail Levin, who wrote the, um, the essay, um, um, she's also the um, author of uh, Lee Krasner, a biography, and she brought tremendous experience to, um, to what she's delivered in this work. And you know, well, well, since, since you, since yeah. you spoke about her, you, take, you can take the image down while we chat a bit, but since, since you spoke about her, I, I just want to, because she wrote the, um, the essay that introducts, uh, introduction to the catalog. She wrote the entire catalog. The, the, the well, I have a quote. I just want to read one thing oh, that, she, yes, that, she, that she wrote, because I thought it kind of speaks to you and the work, and I thought it probably encapsulated a lot. Denver's, De De Devers' new pictures do not seek to replicate nature, but instead vibrate between representation and abstraction, a kind of rhythmic dance expressing both what he later recalls in his mind's eye and simultaneously how exhilarated he feels while he loses himself in nature. That's awesome. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful writing and, and, and but it's it's part of of um, Gail's great um, um, skill and talent. But it's also it's insightful into what you do because well, she, your your whole thing is about relating to nature yes. and and how it affects you and and what it looks like. It's just it's so specific. I I'm I'm so happy about it. She's really teased out something from the story that that uh, I'm I'm not really so able to speak about so eloquently and and yet it. I, I feel I own that. I, I take that. That's, I'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> you do own it. Yeah, thank you. I feel it. It's true. It, it resonates with me. As well as that painting of that... Okay, that, we can go back to the next painting, yeah. You want, you want to go back to the previous one? That, um, no, the next one. The orange, that orange one, I think. Uh, Sorry about that. That's okay. Wow. This almost has a Van Gogh quality to it in a way. Tell us you about it. You to speak about yeah. this? this? Well, this is one that um, is, for me, is, is evocative of, of uh, California. And uh, the, the title is Agaves. I, I didn't want to locate it in place because the, it's, really more about, it's really more about painting. And, and, uh, but I do find some of those hues in the landscape and the, the, the pink corresponds to a, a blossoming ice plant. The agaves themselves create these beautiful plumes and uh, periodically. And, and so that, that's what I included in that, including the site. How, how big is that one? That one is 36 by four, three by four feet. So that's a smaller one. <laughs> that's kind of the, that's the range of my scale, really, is right, from. No, but I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> but in terms of your, your large, large painting, it's a little smaller. It's a little smaller. <laughs> it's comfortable. We have, we have some more images from the show, too, from the exhibition. Oh, this one is, is titled Central Coast, and Again, it's not a, a specific place, but um, but um, through through just working with the paint and scraping it down and applying more paint, to me it it, bega it became a little bit like the sensation of 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 rain and fog, which which we so need. It's it's uh, um, these our water has become something of almost a fetish when it when we actually do have rainfall and this looks like it had you've done a lot of scraping on this one this one i did and i and i think it i felt it was successful i did too and needed some but i went back in and i refined a few areas to to, to just 
bring some focus to the to the center mm -hmm. and and uh, w work with a little bit thicker paint and that's what I do and so I'm very happy with that one and w when where does your first in inspiration come from like when you start something often it's I begin with a very loose easy um, line with a paintbrush and and uh, just very wet and so I have a very simple simple sketch and and I don't prepare preliminary sketches I work directly on the canvas and then I begin to to just apply the paint onto different areas in 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 a uh, sort of a transfer mat matter um, that they that's referred to as decalcomania wow. and it's something that Max Ernst and other artists during um, yeah during the the, the I think he invented it this pro in Germany in the 20s, but but many people come to this naturally on their own, and and so it helps me to just not think so much, but but about about forms, but really um, consider a color and building a surface. That's my really my beginning, mm -hmm. and then I have that fragile drawing underneath that I can either let go of or or add to. Wow. So we have we have about ten minutes, and there's a few more images we want to show from the show. So let's let's go on with these. This one I, is this this pro this this painting is probably the most content or driven or or editorially at least. Um, it's the title is Tipping Point, and meaning and what? Why did you come up with that? It's interesting because these paintings they the the meaning sort of shifts while I'm working. And, and I came across a beautiful plume on Main Street in Sag Harbor from, from a yucca plant just growing on Main Street in front of someone's house. And I, I took a picture of it and, and I began working with the form. And, but this was, it, it also grows on the West Coast, but this was happening during the, the terrible um, fires in California and Oregon last year. And, and uh, family and friends were complaining about the ash and, and how uncomfortable it was. And, and then about that time, I, start, I noticed that our skies, these, these um, clouds brought the smoke all the way to the East Coast and, and it was coloring the shape of our sun. And so I, I, I sort of leaned into that whole idea and some of the background I allowed to sort of appear ashen-like. And, and interestingly, those yucca plants have this incredible capacity for air purification and, and circulation as long as they're not killed. And so for me, the, uh, it becomes uh, a meditation on where we are in global warming. And I could say I, I, I'm about 51% optimistic and 49% pessimistic about the About outcome. us getting over, taking care yeah, of I the issue? Yeah, I don't. It doesn't. It's. I, 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 I don't know. It, I, I'm not 51. <laughs> I'm optimistic at the moment. <laughs> you know, I'm barely optimistic. <laughs> You're being kind. Yeah. I think. <laughs> so we <laughs> let's not digress. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's the next painting from the exhibition? These are all wonderful. I love them all. Patrick, thank you. I can't wait to see the show tomorrow. I'm. I, I'm, I'm so glad you will. This. Um, this, this is a painting closer to home, and, but this is Orient Point on the North Fork. More specifically, it's, it's the uh, body of water it was considered Narrow River, and across the way are, um, I believe it's, it's uh, Block Island Sound. It is. And, and it's just, uh, there's a Land's End quality to it. And, and to that re that area as well as Montauk and and I I'm interested in both those places to just visit and and also to to work with they're they're they're, they're inspiring they're, 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 yeah they're, they're, <laughs> they're quite extraordinary to be there too you've captured a very interesting thank you so we have now th now this this is uh, this is Gail Gail Levin who wrote the uh, catalog which one is she um, Gail Levin is on the um, she has the bag on uh -huh. and and with the floral motif on her dress and 
and Christine Berry, co-partner, um, owner of Berry Campbell. Martha's not pictured, but... Martha uh, Campbell is the other owner. And, and, uh, but this is Christine, and I'm so happy to have them together in this picture. It's nice. Uh, it's, it's and, nice. And then they're standing in front of a painting, which I think we have, have next. Is that right? Yes. This is a this is a, a rose from my studio garden, and but it's it's uh, um, I've tried to I've tried to work with it in in um, a, a, a fresh way, and a number of the the roses that I have painted I've I've titled them after after heroines or figures from from um, literature, and this one is titled after. Um, playwright Joe Pinturo's character, a local playwright, no less, <laughs> local playwright, whose um, character Philomena Lazara, um, at the end of the play, is poised to to leave her her apartment and is on the front steps, and she suffered from agoraphobia and some there was some terrible abuse that occurred in her within her family but she's poised to step off the steps for the first time to meet a car service and to go back to Sicily. <laughs> and so I thought that somehow that that flower, it, it just reminded me of her in the character. And how can we separate our, our mind from, from the things we see? It's just, it's these associations, they, just, they happen and, and I'm, I'm so happy about that. That's cool. Yeah, thank <laughs> it's you. very interesting. Now, now, you know, just recently you did a, you did a, uh, you had a discussion or a talk at the Paula Krasner House, and you talked about nature into art, which is the emphasis of practically everything you do. So, tell us a, get share a little bit of what oh. you shared with them at at this. Uh, oh, certainly. I was so proud to do that. Um, it, it was during the the uh, tail end of the pandemic, and this was supposed to be a Zoom program. But I had I have very poor connectivity in in my studio, and so they said, "Why don't you just come over and you, we'll set you up in in uh, Jackson and Lee's studio, and you could do it from there." And uh, so oh, cool. I was so happy about it, <laughs> and and uh, and so we spoke about you know we spoke about uh, I, um, my origins and and largely. Uh, th th this just happened in probably half a year ago, and so it's fairly, it follows the, the path of, of this exhibition at Barry Campbell as well. But the, uh, I think I mentioned uh, about Jackson Pollock was asked by and Hans Hoffman um, about uh, his response to nature and how is he inspired by nature. I just don't see that in, in your work. And, and Jackson Pollock said, well, I am nature, and and Hans Hoffman became very upset and stormed out of the, down the steps of their apartment in, in the city, and and uh, but it's true we are, we are nature. We we have all of the elements of the yes. of the planet and and stardust in us, and and so stardust in us. Yeah, I mean from from um, this whole idea of of planets and the and the minerals and and. I never, but I never thought of that concept of having stardust in us. I think it's really interesting. It's, it's there. We're part of. We're, we're we're part of. It's part of creation. So we have to cultivate more of our stardust energy. We have to. I think it's <laughs> true, and I think it has to do with that song, um, about that was popular. I don't know if it was uh, St Seals and uh, St Stephen Sills or, but but Joni Mitchell. Joni Mitchell wrote it. But about about uh, we've got to get back to the garden. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's it's in there, and uh, um, and and. Uh, and so you're getting back to the garden in every way you know how. I think it's it's one of the only things that we could we can really hold. Um, it's 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 uh, it's a promise that's just fulfilled daily in in everything that's that's around us. It's just for us to. To tune in or, or self identify with reflect, it really reflect on as a ref, as an as image reflection of ourselves exactly to find ourselves in it it's it's really the the um, the the height of of uh, some of the pursuits of of um, yogis and and uh, swamis. Now you studied yogi. 
I did, yes. I still do. I still practice yoga, and, and, it, and my interests seem to, they, they shift over time. So do you, do you, do you, do you sit every day? Um, I don't. I don't have practice the asana or the posture every day. Uh -huh. But there are there are um, eight limbs to yoga, which include thought, meditation, concentration, and re and also trying to to uh, do one's best to disengage and release. And so, I, if I'm not doing a physical practice, um, I'm certainly thinking about those do, others. Do you, do, you, do you think your yoga is the foundation of everything you do? No, I think it's part of it, but it, ex it facilitates. It ex it. But it explains a lot to me, and it it offers a glimpse of a kind of integration that's possible for for all people. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But that that's a lifetime. So it does facilitate, is what it, it really helps. Does. It gives me gives me gives me a, um, a pathway in some respects, and and but so does my painting as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they both do. So, so we're close to out of time, but your exhibition is going to be at the Barry Campbell Gallery until October 15th. And again, it's at 530 West 24th Street. So I hope people will get over and see it. I can't it's wait gone. to go tomorrow. I'm, I'm, really, I'm looking forward to it. And we have a new guest. I just want to show Truman off. Yes. Come here, Truman. Truman's been here, and he's been well-behaved all through this. Look at Truman. Say hello out there, Truman. Right out that way. Look at the guests. Look at the yes. Darling. <laughs> thank you for letting us. Thank you for coming to do this. Thank, thank you. for letting me show off Truman. Thank you. <laughs> well, we love Truman. Truman's an angel, yes. You should bring him to the gallery, too. They'll like him. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Eric, thank you so much. I, I love your work. Um, thank you. I really appreciate this opportunity to see you and Barry again. Well, it's too. always great to see you, too. So thank you again. Thank you.